Chapter 10, Human Alteration of the Atmosphere. Section 10.4, uh, Acid Deposition. So um, many of our emissions uh, related to fossil fuels um, create acidic pollutants. And these pollutants can be deposited to the Earth's surface in both dry and wet forms. The common uh, scientific term to describe this, this form of pollution is acid deposition. Um, the more uh, public term is acid precipitation. But acid precipitation actually uh, specifically describes wet forms of acid pollution. And uh, acid precipitation doesn't include uh, things like um, acid fog and acid cloud vapor. Uh, acid precipitation does include things like uh, acid rain, acid sleet, and acid snow. So precipitation, if, if you were to, to take a sample of precipitation and measure its um, pH, you'd find that it's, it's normally uh, acidic. Uh, um, pH, uh, precipitation normally has a pH somewhere between uh, 5.0 to 5.6. Um, and this is due to natural uh, atmospheric chemical reactions, with uh, many of the acids actually coming from uh, decomposition processes occurring over the ocean or within the oceans. Uh, so you'll find that uh, uh, precipitation that falls uh, along a coast to be a lot more acidic than precipitation that falls further inland. But some uh, locations in eastern North America uh, had precipitation that was uh, far more acidic than uh, what I just described. In fact, uh, some places in eastern North America had precipitation with a pH values as low as 2.3. Uh, this also occurs in, in Europe uh, and in, in Asia, uh, um, extremely acidic precipitation events. So uh, with a pH of 2.3, this is about 10, or sorry, 1,000 times more acidic than uh, natural uh, precipitation. So how, how does um, acid precipitation and acid deposition form? Um, it's mainly produced from the oxidation of uh, nitrogen oxides uh, or sulfur dioxide. And uh, these are gases that are uh, released into the atmosphere by a number of uh, human uh, processes. Uh, reactions at the Earth's surface or within the atmosphere can convert these pollutants, uh, the nitrogen oxide, into nitric acid and the sulfur dioxide into sulfuric acid. So um, here we see uh, a graphic uh, displaying um, the process involved. So we have emission source and uh, the sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxides uh, come from primarily the burning of uh, coal and oil. Uh, they become oxidized and uh, uh, that leads to them being converted in, uh, into um, acidic uh, precipitation or acidic deposition. Um, sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxides can, can also be uh, just dry deposited to the Earth's surface and if they mix with water then they form uh, acids in that form. Uh, there is natural ammonia that's released uh, from um, nature and uh, that can react to form uh, a type of uh, acidic compound too. Emissions of sulfur dioxide are responsible for 60 to 70 percent of the acid deposition that occurs on our planet, and more than 90 percent of this sulfur uh, in the atmosphere is of human origin. The major uh, sources of this sulfur include um, uh, coal burning, the smelting of metal sulfide ores, um, natural uh, sources include uh, volcanic eruptions, uh, organic decay, and ocean spray. Some 95% of the elevated levels of nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere are the result of human activities. The re remaining 5% comes from natural processes uh, like a bacterial action in soil, 
uh, forest fires, uh, volcanic action, and lightning. The um, human uh, sources of nitrogen oxides come from the combustion of oil, uh, coal, and gas. So what kind of harm does acid deposition cause to uh, life? And um, there are uh, several different ways that acid deposition influences the environment. Um, obviously, aquatic systems are probably uh, most susceptible to uh, some type of change, uh, acid deposition. Uh, entering into these systems, either wet or dry, can lower the pH of, of these aquatic ecosystems. And the organisms that uh, live in aquatic e ecosystems are very sensitive to changes in pH. Most aquatic systems have a neutral or, or acidic um, pH, um, and if uh, acids are added, that pH will go down. Um, if the aquatic systems um, are in uh, an environment that contains a lot of uh, basic compounds like calcium, magnesium, then they tend to be more buffered from any damage uh, that could be caused by uh, acid deposition. One of the first um, examples of uh, acid deposition influencing life uh, was the death of uh, fish in lakes in um, Canada. And this was being caused by uh, increasing acidity uh, of the water in these lakes. Uh, these lakes were, were downwind of uh, industrial um, sites that produced the um, emissions, um, and uh, the deposition occurred either uh, wet or dry into the lakes, changing their, their, their pH. But the, the, the story was a little bit more comp complex than, ju than just a lowering of pH. Uh, scientists also discovered that when the lakes became acidified, that the uh, concentrations of heavy metals uh, increased. Um, heavy metals like uh, mercury, aluminum, and cadmium. The source of the mercury, aluminum, and cadmium that was being discovered in the lakes was not from the water itself, but from the surrounding sediments and soils uh, around the lake. Um, the uh, acid deposition uh, entered the soils, um, uh, uh, mixed with water or came as, as acid precipitation. This influenced the, the pH of the soils, and at low uh, pHs, the soils tend to release mercury, aluminum, and cadmium. Uh, into uh, the soil water and therefore also into the groundwater and it would flow uh, into the lake. So this diagram illustrates the process of sulfur dioxide emissions. Um, and because of these emissions, we, we get uh, falling from uh, um, clouds, um, hydrogen ions, and then uh, SO4 uh, uh, cation, um, the, this accumulates uh, at the soil surface then into the soil. Um, some of it reacts with limestone minerals if they're available, releasing calcium and magnesium to the lake. Uh, some of the hydrogen just enters the lake on its own. Uh, some of the sulfate uh, enters the lake on its own. Uh, enters the lake on its own. Uh, sometimes the, the acids uh, interact with uh, um, clay micelles and that releases things like aluminum, uh, mercury, and, and cadmium in, um, from the clay micelles, and then it migrates in, in the groundwater uh, to the lake. Um, another um, phenomenon that, that was seen in um, uh, ecosystems and aquatic systems in uh, the middle uh, latitudes was something called acid shock and uh, acid shock was related to the buildup of, uh, of um, acidic uh, um, snow and ice uh, on the ground surface, 
and then with the uh, sudden uh, melting of this snowpack, we get a, a, a flush, a, a rapid flush of this water rich in acids uh, into the soil system and then uh, in, into the lake. And, and the concentrations of the acids were, were anywhere from five to 10 times more acidic than just a simple rainfall event. Um, the uh, acid deposition also influenced uh, vegetation and it was found that, that the vegetation that could be um, um, harmed was vegetation that was growing on, on acidic um, bedrock, acidic soils to begin with, things like um, um, coniferous trees, coniferous forests uh, tend to grow on, on that type of environment. And um, any ad additional acidity added to that environment caused the, the dieback of uh, forest trees. And here we see a picture of, of dead forest uh, due to acid deposition. So uh, in the soil, um, the increasing acidity um, uh, removes important nutrients like calcium, potassium, and magnesium, and leaves behind uh, uh, more toxic uh, elements like the heavy metal aluminum and uh, aluminum uh, damages the roots, interferes with uh, normal nutrient uptake of the plant, uh, uh, nutrients such as magnesium and pota potassium, and, and the trees basically uh, die because of deficiencies of these important nutrients that they require. Um, reductions in pH were also shown to have an effect on the germination of seeds and uh, inhibited the growth of, of young seedlings. Um, Many soil organisms that are important in, in decomposition processes uh, don't survive well if the pH of the soil goes uh, below 6.0. And of course, if you have the death of these soil organisms, then uh, decomposition and nutrient cycling uh, is reduced. Um, high concentrations of nitric acid can increase the availability of nitrogen. And uh, strangely enough, what this can do is it can result in over fertilization uh, of, of the ecosystem um, uh, and this condition is known as, as nitrogen saturation so um, may, may, maybe your your, your dad uh, one at one time was looking after the lawn and and over fertilized with, with uh, urea and and burnt the grass or, or we've all seen uh, um, burn spots caused by uh, by dog pee uh, th that's an example of what would happen. Uh, it, it, nitrogen uh, it, is, is an important nutrient for growth, but if there's too much of it, it actually uh, uh, burns the plants' uh, roots and, and, and kills them. Um, acid precipitation can cause direct damage to uh, the leaves of plants, um, and this may be from precipitation or from, from, from fog, cloud, uh, cloud water, and uh, um, this basically uh, uh, removes nutrients from the the uh, the plants or the leaves themselves from from the tissues, uh, causing tissues to be uh, starved of, of important nutrients for survival. Um, dry deposition of, of sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxides that have also been found by scientists to uh, affect the ability of leaves to retain water. Um, when they are underwater stress, so it, it enhances uh, uh, them drying out in, in dry conditions. And, if, and finally, acid deposition can leach nutrients from uh, plant tissues, weakening the, the structure uh, of, of the plants.